Hey, we're back. This is another Freeze application tutorial. In this video, I'm going to wrap up everything that we've seen in all the previous videos. If you haven't checked out any previous Freeze videos, uh, I would suggest that you do that because uh, you're going to need to know how to deal with controllers and models and views in order to really understand this tutorial. Uh, so we're going to use a practical example. We're going to go into reporters. And as a practical example, what we're going to do is we're going to take this customer ID column from our packages table. And instead of just showing the ID, we're going to show the name of the customer. Now, the one thing about object relational mapping is that it makes it very easy to do simple queries if you're doing a direct one-to-one -one table. Uh, as soon as you start doing joins, things get more complicated because you have to tell the framework how to do these table joins in a way that's efficient. There's a few ways to do that in Freeze, but what I'm gonna show you how to do it is using the reporter method. Now, the model is a direct one-to-one -one mapping to a table. Uh, reporters are an arbitrary query that you can create but they can be used exactly the same in freeze as models. And the only downside of a reporter is that they are read-only. But most of the time, I mean, that's not really a problem because generally if you're doing an aggregate query or a join query, you're not gonna be doing updates off of that anyway. So we're gonna use this reporter that's generated automatically with freeze for us called package reporter. And what this is, is it's just an example. It shows you how to use reporters and it's not even used in the application. Uh, by default. But what this shows you is here's a reporter. We extend this class called reporter uh, and then we implement a static function called get custom query and in there we actually put SQL code. We can put anything we want. The only thing is that all of the return columns need to match exactly the properties that we create for this class. So you can see in the example we say custom value here as custom field example and we put that in. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to update our SQL query to do the join however we want, need to do that in order to pull in the fields that we need. Enter, join, customer on, and I happen to know these column names, customer ID equals C ID. So I've joined in the table, written a little SQL there. And now I'm going to pull in the field. We don't want this custom field example. Don't really need it. But what we do want is customer name. And the field name for that is C name. Okay, so I've written this query. Now I need to make sure that my fields match. Since I called this customer name down there, I need my field up here to be customer name as well. So the end goal is to pull this into our grid. So how do we do that? The first thing that we need to do is we need to go into the controller, package controller, and we need to find the query method. So the query method is the method that's used by this table to pull in its data. It pulls it in via Ajax. Now, if we wanna make things a little easier to see, what we can do is we can actually look at the output from the API and that this table is using instead of just looking at the table itself. And if you've looked at the routes at all, you'll notice that all of the JSON functions in our REST services have the route API slash and then the table name. If we go there, this is actually the data that's being returned by package controller query. So what I'm going to do inside query is the critical line that we're looking for is right here querying for the package. And if you remember from the uh, video about models, essentially we're just querying the package table here. Uh, we actually have this line in here twice because there's two different conditions whether or not you're using pagination. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to change package to package reporter. Freeze knows where to look for these classes. So it knows to look inside the model folder and the reporter folder looking for these uh, types of objects. So if I save that, and now we go back and refresh this, now we have our REST service returning the customer name in the query. So let's go back to the table. But it still doesn't show up in the table. 
And in order to do that, we need to make changes to the client side code. So now the server side is already done, but the client side needs to be updated. In order to update that, we have to update two things. The first thing we have to update is inside scripts. We need to update the backbone model, and that's located inside scripts model.js. And you can see here these models, they all match basically the database tables. <clears throat> And we can see here's the package model. And it of course just has the same fields that are in the database. We've just added one there, so what we need to do is we need to say customer name. Now notice on the JavaScript side everything is with lowercase first letter. And you might think this seems a little scary. We're putting in an extra field into this model that doesn't really exist in the database table. Well, conveniently, Backbone doesn't really care. We can have an extra field here, and the worst thing that's gonna happen is just that this field will be empty most of the time. And it doesn't really matter, uh, because our methods that update data are not really looking for this field. Uh, Backbone doesn't really care whether it gets a value for this field or not. It'll just leave it empty. So it doesn't hurt anything to put it in here. If we were going to significantly change the package reporter so that it no longer really resembled the package table anymore, it might make sense to actually just create a completely different model. But then if you did that, we would have to rewrite substantial parts of the code. We've got one last thing to do, that's we need to go into the view. We need to go to the package list view. We need to find the template. This is an underscore template for the table. You can see that here. We've got the column headers and then we've got the uh, looping through the rows. And instead of customer ID, we'll just delete the ID out of there. And instead of customer ID here, we'll change it to customer name. Okay, so let's hit refresh. There we go, we've just pulled in the customer name. If we cruise through them, we can see indeed that they are all there. And we've done it with a join query, so it is efficient, and it's not doing a query for every row, and life is good for everyone. I know it's a lot to take in, and you may not completely understand all of these things that we've done, but hopefully it will get you moving in the right direction, and then you'll pick up little bits as you go. So feel free to post some comments, questions. I'll try my best to answer them. And thank you again for watching, and giving Freeze a try.